your Chicago number is here. Go ahead, please. Hello, Tony. This is Johnson. Yes. I'm at Southampton now. When do you sail? Okay, has the kid arrived yet? He's on the boat now. Have you seen Ace Marco and Bugs Leary? Ace is on the passenger list, but Bugs Leary isn't. Okay, whatever you do, watch the kid. Leave it to me. See you in Chicago. I still don't see why you have to employ this English guy when there's so many of our boys out of work. Yeah, but Ace Marco knows all our boys, and he don't know Johnson. Well, I still don't see what you're worrying about Ace for. Now listen, when that guy goes to Europe, he don't go for no holiday. He goes to work. And I believe he's going to work on the Schultz kid. Well, they can kidnap a millionaire's son in mid-ocean. Well, I'm not taking the chance. I want Ace watched, and the best man to do it is Gloves Johnson. Do fine. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Hey, where's my half a dollar? Yeah. You what? My half a dollar. Half a dollar? What for? For pushing a barrow. Well, I like that. I let you play with my barrow, and you want me to pay you for it? You said you'd give me half a dollar. Mm. Give me half a dollar? No, but you know, I wouldn't give anybody half a dollar for pushing a little barrow like that. Go on, run away. Get your swindler. Yeah. Well, I'll have you warned off the dock for that. Oh! Oh! Who threw that trunk? You clumsy rat! I got a notion of punch in the snoot! Play off, punch drunk. Okay, sweetheart, fade. Uh, you dope. They throw guys in the can for punching people in this country. Yeah, that's the trouble. You can't go to a good fight over here. Gee, I wish I'd get a crack at something so I get my iron shaped. Yeah. Uh, there's the siren. I gotta go on board now. Stick right behind me. Here's a visitor's pass. Ace! Ace, don't I have to have a ticket? Where do you think I'm gonna get money enough for two tickets? We're going back just the same way we came over. You stow away. Look. Ain't I ever gonna be a passenger? Are you always gonna ride first class and me have to sleep down in the bills? One of us has gotta ride with the dough. A uh, dough? If I ever get any dough, I'm gonna rent the Royal Suite on a big boat and go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. <coughs> Hey, you little brat, where you going? Where you... Hey, you want to be more careful, Sonny. Did you hurt yourself? Are you all right? Hey, where did you get the mother instinct? Get your stomach off the rail. I'm coming out again. Oh, hey, wait a minute. That's the Schultz kid. The Schultz kid? Oh, what are we waiting for? Why don't we snatch him now? Before 500 witnesses? Bugsy, you are getting more brilliant every day. Yeah, yeah, thanks. What? I'm not going to hold my ship back for this man or anyone else. I sail at noon. Anyway, he can't be aboard. All passports had to be examined at the gangway. But Grabs Johnson specializes in passports, sir. He's got dozens of them. All we ask is that you get the visitors ashore earlier and give us half an hour to look over the passengers. But there are 250 of them in the first class. You can't cross-examine them all. No, but we can have a look at their fingers. Fingers? Yes. This man Johnson's got two missing on the left hand. All visitors I'm sorry, sir. No offense, but uh, I just happened to catch sight of your name. <coughs> are you uh, are you related to Professor Tavistock, the famous historian? Why? Well, the professor's a man I've always wanted to meet. Well, you've met him. Now you can run along. I uh, I hope you didn't think I was inquisitive, sir. But uh, you and I are sort of colleagues. Colleagues? Yes, I'm in the scholastic profession too. Okay. Well, in term time. As a matter of fact, I I used to teach from your primer. Are you flatter me? Oh no, no. I think it's quite a good book. I'm oh. hoping to go to America myself. Right. And uh, when I get there, I'm uh, I'm going to open a school. When I get the fare to get there, yes, I'm saving up my tips. Yes, sir, well, uh, thank you. Uh, of course, it takes quite a lot of tips to make up the fare. Yes, sir, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I've got no change. Will you help yourself to a drink? Oh, all right, thank you. Let's see, five packages of Quippens, five freezer 16, 16 pences, one and eight. Yes, I'll have a double. Yes, sir. Oh, come outside a minute. You chaps, they're on board. What? Yes, I followed them. They're going round the cabin. They're off all right. I saw them take a man by the left arm and look at his hand. How long have they got? They won't be there now. They'll be here any minute. Don't worry. They won't get me as easy as that. You wait for me on the dock. But they're watching all the gangways. I said wait for me on the dock. Uh, oh, I, uh, 
Uh, I, I forgot to count the little bag. <laughs> oh, that's quite all right. Have as much as you want. It's after all, we are colleagues. Yes, I suppose you, so. You've been looking after me, and I'm looking after you. Oh, well, that's very really kind of you. Yeah, well, uh, here's to it. Oh, thank you. Anything wrong? No, no, no it just uh, tastes a little bit like, like pear drops, you know. But I rather like it. Here, yeah, try it. Quite, it's, it's quite... Is there a gentleman in this cabin? Depends what you call a gentleman. Five bags, but since he's too drunk to give me a tip. Professor, eh? Well, he's full of more than knowledge at the moment. Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. Atlantic Ocean? Well, well, what are you doing out there? I never thought to inquire, sir. Will you drink this, sir? No, no, no. Take it away. Take it away. Where am I? On your way to New York, sir. New York? Well, that's in America. Now, that is the accepted theory, sir. Well, well, what am I doing on this ship? Possibly you came aboard with your mind on other things, sir. <laughs> eh? It frequently happens, sir. It's getting away from your habitual routine that does it, sir. Pure force of habit. I remember when I was in the Mauritania, sir, we had a passenger who used to go up on deck every evening to get the nine o'clock train home. We had to have a man at the rail to prevent him from catching it. Oh, how long did that go on? Oh, not very long, sir. We forgot about Saturday when he caught the 1.30. Oh, awful. Allow me, sir. Eh? Well, what are you going to do? Ice bag, sir. Not very becoming, I agree, sir. But most soothing, sir. There, sir. Anything else, sir? Yes, don't keep calling me, sir. Very good, Professor. Yeah. Professor. Professor. Hey, whose cabin is this? In yours, sir. Professor, sir. sir. Oh, this is dreadful. Is, is the captain on the ship? Yeah, there was when you left Southampton, sir. Well, well listen, I, I want to see him at once. Very good, sir. I'll go and tell him, sir. Yes, you go and tell him. And tell him. I, uh, uh, no, no, wait a minute. Don't go. I, I, you want to want to tell. Uh, so I'll go. Wait here. Are these the captain's quarters? Yes, sir. Is the captain at home? Yes, sir. You'll take a seat. He won't keep you a minute. Thank you. So you want to have a good look at me? Uh, uh, no, not particularly. All right, I've had a good look at you. Now let's call it off. Oh. Got a cold? 
Uh, no. Then no. blow it. Do you want to see the captain? No, the captain wants to see me. Ah. Well, they tell me he's a really nice man. Well, I hope so. Why, haven't you met him yet? No, we're getting together for the first time. Are you a passenger? Uh, yes, uh, I suppose you might call me that. You mean you have a real cabin all to yourself? Well, for the moment. Oh, gee, you're a lucky guy. I've always wanted a cabin all to myself. Why, how many are there in yours? Oh, I haven't got one. I'm a stowaway. Yeah. A stowaway? Oh, how interesting. <laughs> that means you... That uh... means I haven't got a ticket. Oh. I say, what will they do with you? Oh, they'll probably stick me downstairs and make me scrub a lot of potatoes. Oh, make you work in the gallery? No, not up in the gallery, down in the kitchen. Then when I get to the other side, they'll throw me in the jug. If I'm there. What do you mean, if you're there? Oh, there's more ways to get off a ship than between a couple of dicks. Do you mean that, uh, that one can get off the ship without being seen? Sure. Could two? What's the idea? Well, uh, of course, it wouldn't apply in my case, you see, but uh, I was thinking that... Uh, you ain't got a ticket, neither. Well, not exactly. But it's uh, just that my position here is a little, uh, well, a little, little irregular. You see, I brought some baggage on board for a, uh, for a friend, and he drugged me, and when I woke up, I was at sea. <laughs> well, what's funny about that? Oh, you're still at sea. I never heard such a punk story. <laughs> It's not punk, it's true. That's, that's exactly what happened. Oh, listen, man, you've got to get a better story than that. I brought some bags aboard for a friend and he drugged me. <laughs> I mustn't forget to remember to tell that to the boys. <laughs> well, well, listen, listen. Here, I'll tell you what I was thinking. Supposing, uh, like, uh, in a case of emergency, <laughs> I was wondering whether, whether you and me could go ashore together, eh? Sure, under one condition. What's that? Could you keep this for me? Yeah, certainly, yes. Oh, a pistol! Yes. Oh, a pistol? That's a cannon. If I get caught with that on me, I get two years in the pen. Yeah, but what do I get? Nothing. You slip it to me as I come out. Uh -oh. I'll, I'll put it away. You waiting to see the captain, sir? Uh, yes, but uh, this gentleman's before me. Oh, don't worry about him, sir. He's got plenty of time. Uh, oh, really? I mean, no hurry. Besides, he was here first. If you want to see the captain, you better come now, sir. He's rather busy this morning. Oh. <laughs> oh, good morning, sir. What can I do for you? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, I've no right to be here at all. Oh, nonsense, sir. My ship and myself are at your service. Oh, but you don't understand. You see, uh, at the moment, I'm the occupant of cabin number eight. Number eight? And uh, I'm... I'm... Professor Tavister. Oh, that's the point. How do you do, Professor? Won't you sit down? Uh, yes, uh, but... Uh, I hope they made you comfortable. Uh, oh, yes, yes, very, but... Uh, well, there's, uh, there's something I, I want to tell you. You see... Come in. I... Shall I take this towway down, sir? No, I'd better see him first. You'll excuse me a moment. Oh, certainly, yes. I, I'm entirely in your hands. Bring him in. Ever met the stowaway, Professor? Well, uh, Unimaginative men. They make the most childish excuses. His name is Bugs Leary, sir. Search him. Yes, sir. All right, where's the gun? Gun? Is that what that's for? Yes, don't you remember? It, it's for the... <coughs> don't you know that if they find a gun on you, it's, uh, it's, it's illegal? Stowaways with guns are put in irons. Would you say that again, please? He said stowaways with guns are put in irons. Are you deaf? No. I just wanted to be sure that everyone heard it. Anything to say? Yeah, I'm on the ship by mistake. Sir! Uh, sir! Go on, tell the captain your story. Uh, well, it's uh, <coughs> like this. See, I brought some bags aboard for a friend, and he drugged me, and when I woke up, I was out at sea. Well. He drugged 
<laughs> yeah! <laughs> That'll teach you to come here with a story like that. Put him to work in the galley. Yes, sir. Come on, get up. And now, Professor, what can I do for you? Uh, oh, uh, uh, nothing, thank you. Nothing. I, um... Uh, oh, yes, yes. I, I just came in to see if I could set my watch by your, uh, your chronometer. Why, certainly. With pleasure. Yes. <clears throat> oh, dear. Oh, I, I've left it in the cabin. Excuse me. I know you're the boss, and I know you're a very nice fellow. But you walked across my clean floor once, and you walked across my clean floor twice. And if you walk across my floor again, I'm gonna break every bone in your body! Oh, <laughs> in your cabin? Oh, yes, yes. I've got a nice big bunk, then I've got a, a smaller bunk, and I, I've got... No, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. No, it's only a single cabin. Matter of fact, it's a very, very tiny one. There's barely room for one. Okay, then we've taken turns to sleep. Oh, no, I couldn't sleep in turns. Well, once I get to sleep, I'm asleep. Well, then I'll go up and eat with you. Oh, uh, no, you can't do that either. You see, the, uh, the, the captain comes into my cabin very often. The captain? Yes. He comes in there to, uh, to bother my soap. Oh, I hope he slips on it and breaks his... Nick, well, then you'll have to see that I'm fed down here. Yeah. All right. I'll get one of the stewards to bring your meals down. Oh, stewards? Hey, wait a minute. I'm a stowaway. You bring it down yourself. But do you think I'm going to start carrying people's dinners all over the ship? Yes, if you want me to help you get off it. Oh. Well, I want to come, come down here with food in my hands. People will see me. Put it in your pocket. Oh, all right. Hey, what's the 
idea. Pretty good, wasn't it? Thanks. Good. It's disgraceful frightening people like that. What's the matter? Can't you take a joke? Yes, I can take a joke. Okay, take this. Oh. <laughs> 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 yes. Very funny. Yes. Yes. Very, very funny. Reminds me of a little joke I used to play when I was a boy. Uh, uh, would you like to see it? I probably know it. No, you don't know this one. Come here. What's the matter? Can you take a joke? Mom! 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 A man just hit me! A man just what? Hit you? You mean to tell me a full-grown man just took a sock at a little guy like you? Where is he? Down there! It's quite all right. I'll handle this. It's a great pity this happened, sir. It casts the gloom on the trip, sir. Upsets the ladies, sir. Yes, I suppose it does. Oh, yes, sir. The ladies are so soft-hearted, sir. Yes, yes. Thanks for hitting my birdie. Uh, uh, you were saying... Uh, hey, you. Is that right? Did you just take a sock at that kid of mine? Well, uh, well yes. did you or didn't you? Well, well, if you insist, yes, I did. Well, put it there. Come and have a drink. Speaking with a great Professor Davenstock. Well, uh, I, I wouldn't say great. I mean, one professor is very much like another. You know? Oh, that's just your modesty, sir. Well, here's to our better acquaintance. Clarence, I want a word with you. Oh, hello, honey. I want you to meet my great pal, Professor Tavistock. Professor Tavistock? Yes. Nice day, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. What will you think of me behaving the way I did? Oh, I think the apology is due for me. Yeah. Sock him again, Ma. Bertie. Why, Julia? This is the great Professor Tavistock, who writes all those nice history books. You see, Professor, I've been reading all about you in Who's Who. Uh, oh, is there something about me in that? I must get a copy. Tell me, Professor, is this your first trip to America? Yes. I've often wanted to go across, but this is the... Um, uh, the first chance I've had. Oh, but who's who said you were there in 1913? Uh, well, well, books often make mistakes, you know. Who's who doesn't always know what's what. Oh, I think his books are a lot of junk. Now, 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 is that a nice way to talk? You apologize at once. Oh, that's all. It's right. about time someone took that kid of mine in hand. Go ahead, apologize. Also for your behavior earlier on. Do as your father says, Junior. Okay. I'm sorry, Professor. When I told Mata Sakia, I didn't know you were the guy who wrote all those books. Oh, that's all right. Of course you didn't know. Yeah, and if I had, no, I'd put a brick in her hand. What? Uh, what would you do with a son like that? Well, there are one or two things I could suggest. And to think I pay $500 a term to have him taught those kind of manners. Yeah, it seems about $499 too much. You're darn cute, and it is too much. Something ought to be done about our educational system. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, that was my intention in coming over here. I, uh, I, I thought of starting a sort of a new establishment. You mean you want to found a school? Well, I want to find a school. Why, honey, say, listen, Professor, I don't suppose you'd care to take that kid of mine in hand, would you, and see if you can't make something out of him? Why, sir, is Professor Tavistock our birdie tutor? Yes. That's marvelous. Why, you can name your own price. Well, it's very kind of you, but of course I had my mind set on a school. Now, listen, if you'll tame that kid of mine, I'll buy you a school. Yes, but... Uh, now, wait a minute, Professor, I'm a businessman. I'll give you $1,000 a month from the beginning of his first lesson. $1,000 a month? Yes, sir. Beginning with his first lesson? Yep. What are you doing this afternoon? History is the recording of facts, incidents and happenings, <coughs> which are handed down from one generation to another. <coughs> Some of these are very important, and others are of no importance at all. Like you. Yes, like me. Now listen, I've told you before, I don't want any nonsense. I've been engaged as your tutor, and I'm going to tutor you whether you like it or not. Now we'll begin at the beginning of history. I know the beginning. Well, I'm glad you know something. History began in 1492, when Columbus discovered America. Yeah. <laughs> God, why, history began long before America was ever thought of. Not American history. Well, we're not talking about American history. We're talking about English history, real history. Things like the, uh, like, like the Battle of Hastings and the, and the Battle of Bannockburn. Uh, what about our history? The Battle of Gettysburg and the Battle of Bunker Hill. Well, they weren't real battles at all. They were just, uh, just newspaper talk. Okay, then let's hear about your blousy battles. Hey, don't you call our battles blousy. Let me tell you that England fought some of the most important battles in history and won the lot. What about when she fought America? Oh, well, that was only our second 11 playing away. And we won the Great War, too. You, who did? We did. You did? <laughs> I like that. You won the, Why, England won the Great War. 
Well, why don't you pay your war debts? Well, how, how can we pay those when we're saving up for the next war? In any case, that's nothing at all to do with this. We're talking about history. Now, come on. History starts with Alfred the Great. You mean the gink who burnt the donuts? Yeah. The gink? Is that the way to talk about a king, the gink? How would you like it if I said that George Washington was the, uh, the bozo who cut down the cherry tree? He was the bozo. Yeah. Oh, oh well, that's neither here nor there. Now, Alfred the Great was king of... Um, Mercia. Mercia, yes, that's right. Yes, and uh, one day he was sitting in a cave and he saw a spider. That was Robert the Bruce. Yes. Well, I know it was Robert the Bruce. I'm not talking about the same spider. This was another one. The spider that uh, Alfred the Great saw was an English spider, whereas the one that Bruce saw came from Glasgow. Ah, oh, there was only one spider. Yeah. Only one? <laughs> Don't be silly, there were thousands of them. I know what I'm talking about. In any case, we're not discussing spiders. This is history. We're talking about Alfred the Bruce, uh, Robert the Great. Ah, uh, oh, skip it. Yeah. Hey! Hey, come here! You can't run away in the middle of your lessons like that! So he disguised himself as a shipbuilder. Who? Alfred the Great. That was Peter the Great. Yeah. Uh, yes, you're right. Peter the Great. I, I was just trying to catch you. <laughs> and uh, as I was saying, he disguised himself as a shipbuilder. And what else did he do? Uh, well, uh, he, he went to work in the enemy's shipyards and, and built it. Uh, uh, he, he built it. Well, we'll take arithmetic. <coughs> Excuse me, sir, about that passport, sir. Oh, uh, passport? Oh, yes. Well, uh, I'm in the middle of a very important lesson just Yes, now. sir. It's the only outstanding one, sir. The purser must have it today, sir. Oh. Well, I'm afraid I've mislaid it. Oh, I do hope you find it, sir, because they won't let you land without it. They'll put you on Ellis Island, sir. Huh. Good. On uh, Ellis Island? Yes, sir. It's a sort of prison, sir, under the Statue of Liberty. Oh. Oh, is it? Well, I'd better come and look for it, hadn't I? Yes, sir. Here, you study this. Pages 20 to 47. How many pages is that? Well, that's uh, 14, uh, 32, 9... Why ask me? Work it out for yourself. <laughs> Stay up! Oh, Bolly, you... You scared me. Yeah, what, what do you think you're doing to me? Oh, I didn't know you were packing. I'm not packing. These are not my trunks. I'm just looking through it to see what I can lift. Oh. Say, did you bring any food? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I... Yes, I've got a, a hard-boiled egg, some cheese straws, and a slice of melon, and a meringue. Only the meringue broke. What is that junk? Why don't you bring me something to eat? Well, I did. But what I really came down for was to remind you of your promise to help me get off the boat. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Uh, got any salt? So, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, you're going to help me, aren't you? Oh, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can help you. Well, you said you would. What have I been feeding you for? Well, you said don't rest with me. Oh, well, got a plate? Yeah, oh, yeah, see yeah. Hey, I'll... See, when I get off the boat, i got to meet that gang, and they're tough. They won't stand for no amateurs. Uh, who are you calling an amateur? I'm as tough as you are. <laughs> as tough as I am. What did you ever do? Well, I've, uh, well, I've done lots of wicked things. You, you take me along. I'll show them. No, you're not the type. Yeah. Ah, that's just it. You see, that's how I get away with my rickets. Uh, rackets. Rackets? What are your rackets? Well, I've done a bit of murder and uh, quite a lot of arson and, uh, well, anything that's in season. What's seasoning got to do with it? No, 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 you don't understand. Here, I'll tell you a big job I pulled off. The jewel robbery in Piccadilly. Never heard of it. Mm. But that reminds me, I wish I had some pickled lily with this. I brought some pickled onions, will they do? Mmm. Right. Mm. Yeah, I'll tell you another job I pulled off, too. The theft of the Mona Lisa. Who was she? The Mona Lisa? Why, she was a woman with the, um, with the uh, immovable smile. Now, oh, we don't have anything to do with dames. They're too dangerous. No, the Mona Lisa was a picture. Mm. A movie? Yeah. Oh, the... Hey, did you ever hear the wreck of the Hesperus? Yeah. You did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I was responsible for that. No. Yes, I wrecked it to get the insurance money. Hmm. See, the captain had a daughter, didn't he? Yeah, but I wasn't responsible for that. You go for big things, don't you? You got brains. That's what our gang need is a guy with a lot of brains. Ah, you're telling me. Uh, uh, well, you'll help me, won't you? Yeah, you know, I think we could do with a guy like you. Sure, I'll help you. Well, well how are we going to get off the boat? Well, you see, downstairs there's 20 prize cows going to a livestock show in Chicago. No, I don't want anything to do with cattle. If they don't like you, they go for you. Oh, that's a lot of applesauce. Oh, yes, I brought you applesauce, too. <laughs>
ain't got nothing. No? Well, you're gonna get something. It's good to get some fresh air. Oh, I don't know. It's as bad for me as it was for you. Excuse me. Lovely afternoon, isn't it? Yeah. What time do we get in? Well, I'll get in sometime tomorrow. Tomorrow? Do you, mean, do you mean to tell me I've got to spend all night with a lot of uh, lot of strangers? What do we do when we get in? Well, we get the outskirts of Chicago, we jump. Who does? We do, unless you want the dicks to get you. Dicks? Yeah, when we get in, the bulls go through the train. What, for the cows? No, for guys like you and I. Ah. Well, what good would I be to a bull? falling off a bridge like that. I always fall off bridges. I like to fall off bridges. It's my hobby to fall off bridges. Right smack in the police cars! Express guy, huh? Okay, Mike, back to the station. Can I speak to Mrs. Schultz, please? Yes. You'd better say this is Professor Tavistock speaking. One moment, please. Will you speak to a Professor Tavistock, madam? Professor Tavistock? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, hello, Professor. We were getting quite worried about you. What happened to you when we docked? Uh, oh, I got tied up with a friend. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. We want you to come along and dine with us tomorrow evening. Tomorrow? Are you sure you're not expecting me tonight? Oh, no, I mustn't be greedy. And next week, we want you to come and stay with us. No, no, Professor. Not this week. Next week. Now, let's get this straight, Professor. Tomorrow, you come and dine with us, and the following week, you come and stay with us. That's right. Now, don't forget, tomorrow evening, 7.30, I'm giving a big dinner in your honor, so mind you come with a good appetite. Uh, oh, I don't suppose I should eat a thing before then. <coughs> uh, well, goodbye. Nothing too expensive. You got any baggage? Well, uh, not at the moment, no. 
Then it'll be five dollars in advance. What, do I have to pay before the see the room? No, you can see it. Oh, oh dear. I'm, I'm afraid I've broken your September morn. Never mind, leave it there. I hope you're respectable in your habits and don't keep late hours and don't bring strange women in. Strange women? What, me? Good heavens, I don't know any strange women. I'm a respectable middle-aged man. The middle-aged ones are the worst. Oh. They get desperate. Oh, dear. I'm afraid I've broken something else. Never mind. Oh, quite a nice room. That'll be $10. 10 Well, I thought you said 5 Three dollars September morn and two dollars the glass dome. Ah, well, I'm uh, I'm rather short of ready cash at the moment, so would you take my watch as security? Thank you. Okay. You better take the chain as well. Oh dear. Oof. Oh. Bugs Larry? Yeah, I'm Bugs Larry. I've arranged bail for you. You're free. What? I'm free. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, who are you? Uh, my name's Felton. I'm a lawyer. Oh, he sent you, huh? Well, come on. Yeah. Hey, this is Tony Ricardo's joint, ain't it? You're quite correct. Hey, wait a minute. I thought you came from Aces. What's the racket? Now, wait here and you'll find out. Well, he's here. Okay, boys, scram. Not you, Curly. Stick around. Have any trouble? No. But Spring and Bugs Leary has just set you back 20 bucks, and I don't think he's worth 20 cents. No, we'll get a load of this. Huh? Well, what's this got to do with baiting out Bugs Leary? Just this. He's the only guy that knows Ace's plans. He'll be plenty useful. If he talks. I think he will. Drag him in. Okay. Come on in, Bugs. You know everybody, don't you? Tony and yeah. Curly. Hiya. Hello, Bugs. Sit down. Have a drink. Say, what's all this about? Oh, uh, by the way, did you and Ace enjoy your little trip to uh, Europe? So that's it, huh? Well, take your drink back. I ain't talking. Sure you're not. You wouldn't rat on Ace, even though he did double-cross you. What do you mean? Didn't he make you ride the rod and leave you in the cooler? <laughs> Couldn't help that. He ain't got no dough. What about the ten grand he made in England? Ten grand? The dough he chiseled with those con men. He didn't tell him about that. <laughs> I don't believe it. Who told you that? One of his boys tipped off Curly. That's right. 10 G in England. Say, what do you take me for, a sucker? Get smart, punk. Ace is giving you the ha-ha all over town. He's brushed you off. That's why I left you in the can. Say, hey, if I thought that guy was two-timing me, I'd... You'd be burned up and no one would blame you. Bugs, I've got a proposition for you. How about coming in with the regular boys? You're a smart guy and you'll do it. You don't have to be bumming rides with me around. It's first class or nothing. You mean I can have a cabin on the boat? And a pullman on the railroad. How would you like a swell tuxedo like this? Oh, a cabin on the boat, a pullman on the railroad, and a tuxedo. That's what I said. Will you put it in writing? Felstead will make it a contract. Now, uh, is Ace after the Schultz kid? Sure, he's got Fletcher out in the house as a butler now. Curly, ring Marco. Victory, one, one hundred. Ah, so he thinks he's going to make a snatch in my territory, does he? Hey, when you get him, let me talk to him, will you? You'll get your chance later. Ace? Ace, Tony Ricardo. You wouldn't happen to know why I'm calling, would you? That wouldn't be to welcome me back, would it? Territorial agreement? Sure, it holds good. You don't think I'd... Uh... Schultz? Yeah, he was on the boat. So what? He hung up. Lefty, somebody's been talking. Tony's wise at the Schultz layout. We gotta work quick. Get Fletcher. Wilson, go upstairs and turn down the beds. Okay, Lefty, but hurry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow night. Yeah, but it's gonna be easy. There's a screwy professor going to be here, and they're having a reception for him. Oh, it's as good as done. Yes, please. Now, my friend, I want you to drink the health of our guest of honor, that well-known philosopher and scholar, Professor Phineas Tavistock. What is it? He's coming.
coming. Bugs. Get him. Hello, Lefty. Bugs! Gee, it's good to see you again. Say, you seem to pick up class in you. That's a nice piece of monkey suiting you've got on. Should be. It costs twenty-seven fifty and no discount for cash. Are you going to this party? Why? I've got to give the ransom note to Fletcher. Well, the ransom note. Oh, yes. Yeah. Say, Ace told me to come down and get the ransom note from you that I was better dressed to go in that party than you were. But I've only just left, Ace. I know you just left. We went and looked for you, but you're gone. Come on, give me the note. Say, wait a minute. There's something wrong here. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, Lefty, but you talk too much. Okay. Say, here's a note he was taking over to Fletcher. Take care of him. Perfect. Got a pen? Oh, you see, the Pilgrim Fathers were looking for the new Northwest Passage through to, uh, the, to China, you see. But owing to storms and things, they uh, they took the wrong passage and landed up in America. Oh, yeah. What's the matter, I'm not talking loud enough? Broadcasting Company of Chicago. Oh, who's going to broadcast? Why, you are. I am? <laughs> Why, yes, Professor, don't you remember? I told you you were going on the Green Network. Yeah, but you didn't say anything about broadcasting. What Green Network means broadcasting. Oh, does it? Oh, I, I thought it was a tennis club. <laughs> We're on the air in five seconds. Uh, well, what am I going to talk about? This is the Broadcasting Company of Chicago. Education is on the air again. Through the courtesy of the Sweetie Weedy Serial Company, we again bring you an educational celebrity. This week, we present Professor Phineas Tavistock of Cambridge, England. Uh, oh, pardon me. And remember, no matter how much you may learn or how much you may know, without Sweetie Weedies, your brain won't grow. Meet Professor Phineas Tavistock, the man with the Sweetie Weedy brain. And Sweetie Wheaties only cost you ten cents a packet. Get one today from your favorite store. Uh, good evening, Sweetie Wheaties. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I really don't know what I'm going to talk about because until a few moments ago, I had no idea at all that I was going to broadcast on the Green Bridge It has long been my desire to educate the Americans. Uh, well, by that I mean to say to, to make education more general in America. Now, there's no reason at all why every Northern American shouldn't become a Southern gentleman. But, of course, in education, the most important thing... And when the professor says important, he means important. And the most important thing to your brain is Sweetie Wheaties. They're ten cents a packet from all grocers. Uh, uh, it seems to me that before any country can become educated, uh, it, uh, it must become oh. civilized. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, don't misunderstand me. I haven't come here to try and civilize the Americans. And the most civilizing influence in America today are Sweetie Wheaties. Ten cents a packet from all grocers anywhere. Uh, uh, take, the, uh, take the American boys as opposed to the English boys. They talk differently, they, uh, they act differently, and they think differently. But uh, there's one thing on which we must agree. And that is that Sweetie Wheaties are the one and only food to give you cerebral security. Ask your mother to put them on her shopping list. Uh, uh, as I was saying, the, um, uh, the American boys and the, the English boys are, are miles apart. They're, they're, they're very different. Uh, while absence makes the heart uh, lends enchantment to, to the distance, uh, while the, um, well, well, why are they so different? I know, because Sweetie Wheaties are ten cents a packet anywhere. So what? Come in. You're Sweetie Wheaties, Master Bertie. Ah, oh, take the muck away. If you follow me downstairs, I'll have some ice cream for you. In the kitchen? Yes. But you must go carefully, or you'll get me into trouble. Don't worry, no one will see me. Okay, the kid will be right down. Got the ransom note? Yeah. It's all set. Oh, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones. Well, Wilson, what is it? Master Bertie, he's gone. Gone? Gone where? He's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? I found this. and keep this to yourself. Yes, sir. Cyrus! What is the matter? Is there anything wrong? What is it, dear? Listen, honey. Something terrible's happened. What? It's Bertie. Bertie? He's been kidnapped. Oh! Hey, here. Here, read this. 
Now, 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 darling. <laughs> Is anything the matter? Oh, dear. Bad, isn't it? Yes, he won't be able to do his homework now, will he? <laughs> well, why don't you tell the police? That's the last thing we want to do. Now, don't worry, darling. Everything will be all right. I'll find the $50,000 and I'll take it along to the statue, as they say. Oh, you mustn't go. I've lost Bertie. I don't want now, to Now, don't worry, you. honey. They won't hurt me. Oh, but they might. They might kill you or shoot you or throw you in the lake. Yes. Send him. Eh? Yeah. Hey? Please, Professor. Well, um, I'd do it with pleasure if I thought it'd do any good. But these people don't know me. and Maybe they wouldn't give me the child anyway. They would if you gave them $50,000. Oh, but I haven't got $50,000. I know that. Besides, he is your child. And he was your pupil. Uh, was? Oh, does that mean I'm not going to teach him anymore? Well, how can you unless you bring him back? Oh, I see what you mean. Good. Well, then that's settled. Yes, Oh, but, uh, thank you, Professor. I knew you'd help us. I must go and get some aspirin. And I must go and get my bankers. <laughs> well, I suppose I must go and get my hat. <coughs> Funny. You got a light? Light it? Yeah. I say, I, uh, I've got him. Huh? I've got him. Well, don't let it worry you. I've had him. I say, uh, are you, uh, you waiting for the man with a lot of money? <laughs> what happened to you when I jumped off the train? Did you jump too? Oh, no. I had a better idea than that. Yeah? What was that? Not to jump. <laughs> <laughs> you always had brains, didn't you? Come on over and sit down. No, no, no. I, I won't detain you. I expect you've got to be going, haven't you? No, I haven't got any place to go. i got to wait here and meet a guy. Come on. Come on and sit down. Well, just for the moment, then. So what are you doing out this time of night? Oh, well, just taking a little stroll after supper. <laughs> That's all. I suppose you, uh, you haven't seen anybody else waiting around here, have you? Oh, so that's it, huh? Got a date. Mm, you're working fast. What's this, a box of candy? Oh, no, 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 they're, they're nothing at all. They're just some old socks of mine. Oh. Now, I was just interested in, uh, in watching people waiting around. <laughs> well, there's nobody waiting here, but I know a park that a fellow's waiting in. You'd be there all night. <laughs> you, you say there's somebody waiting in another park? Oh, I'll say there is. <laughs> hey, quit making that noise. I'm uh, sorry, did we wake you up? Oh, a wise guy, eh? Yeah, he's a wise guy. Got a lot of brains, Baldy has. Brains or no brains, shut up. Yeah, say, what's that about somebody waiting in another park? I'll let you in on a little secret. See, there's a gang in this town who kidnapped a millionaire's son. Well, they've got all the trouble of snatching him, and who do you think's going to get the dough? I don't know. Who? Me. You mean you're the man the ransom's going to be given to? No, I'm not the one who's got to be given to it, but I'm the one that's going to get it. Oh, how? Well, you see, their ransom note said to deliver the money to the statue in Washington Park. I got a hold of the note and changed it to this park. <laughs> then the, uh, the real kidnappers won't be coming here at all, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> They'll be waiting in Washington Park. <laughs> past 12, boss. How long are we going to wait? Quiet. They'll bring the door, all right, and we're parking right here till they come. <laughs> yeah, but wait a minute. What about the child? Does that mean that if I give you... The, that if somebody gives you the money, you don't deliver it? <laughs> oh, can't. We haven't got the kid. But they don't know it. <laughs> oh, that, that's all wrong. That means you'll be getting $50,000... Uh, or whatever it is, and doing nothing for it. <laughs> well, that's the payoff. <laughs> I tell you to pipe down. Hey, there's no law against laughing, is there? No, but there's a law against disturbance at night. And when I say keep quiet, I mean keep quiet. So get moving. Flatfoot, I'm waiting for a guy. And this is a public bench and a public park, and I'm a public citizen, and I got a public right to sit down. Uh, it's quite right, officer. He, he was waiting for the guy, but um, I don't think he's coming now. Sit down. Don't let him scare you. Okay, if that's the way you want it, you'd better both come with me. Uh, well, which way are you going? To the police station. Hey, don't do that. You want to fight. I want all right. Thanks, Marty. <laughs> hey, you, wait.
Take an hour and a half to get here from the park. So what do I do? Call out the police? Well, I never did like Bugs Leary. He double-crossed Ace, didn't he? And what's to stop him double-crossing us? Hello, Bugsy. Did you get it? You didn't? What happened? Okay, get here as quick as you can. What? You where? He's in jail. Okay, I'll send Felstead down. Well, boys, he hasn't got the dough. How do we know he hasn't? Cops picked them up before anyone got there. Where did they pick him up? In the park. Yeah? Which park? Ace was in a park, too. Ace. Well, we'll soon find out. Curly, get that butler. Who, Fletcher? Well, he's at the Schultz house. I don't care where he is. Get him. Hey, what about Bugs Leary? Never mind, Leary. Get Fletcher. What's all this about? That's what I want to ask you. Sit down. There's going to be plenty of trouble when Ace hears about this. There's going to be plenty of trouble before that. Where's that 50 grand? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the Schultz ransom. Where is it? Maybe you'd like to search it. Yeah! Does that jog your memory a little? Where's the dough? You can't scare me. No? Boys, let's go to work. Okay, Tony. I'll talk. That's better. I thought you'd be reasonable. Who's got the Schultz dough? Ace has got it. You don't want the boys to start persuading you all over again, do you? But it's true. Honest, Tony. Ace sent me the ransom note and it said to take the money to Lincoln Park. How did you know that? I wrote it. The note Ace sent said Washington Park. I changed it to Lincoln. You mean then Ace hasn't got the dough? No, and neither have we. Tavistock guy must have it. Tavistock? Who's he? Oh, he's some kind of a professor that's staying with the Schultzes. He's the one they sent with the ransom. They sent him with the ransom? Curly, looks like the guy we've got to get is this professor. Well, Lummy, have you got to keep walking about like that? Huh? Well, can't you settle down somewhere? <laughs> I can't get over it. Me, Bugs Larry, arrested for laughing. Yeah, well, what about me? I didn't even laugh. And they say America's a free country. Hey, that's a bit different from what I expected. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, England ain't so hot. No? Well, in our police stations, they do give you four walls. Not three walls and a draft. Hey, hey, how much longer we got to stay in this joint? Till your pals bail you out. Hey, listen, phone them again, will you? I said phone them again, will you? They wouldn't like me to run out and fetch them for you. Oh, that's really nice of you. Will you come back? Bring me some hot rum and milk. I've got a cold coming on. And bring me the same. Without the milk. How much? Bugs Leary's bail will be five hundred dollars. Five hundred smackers? Why, he ain't done nothing. He assaulted a policeman. Well, what's that? Uh, now, leave this to me. In the meantime, this gentleman would like to see Bugs Leary. He's his uh, cousin. His cousin, huh? Yes, and clause 12 of the civil charge list allows that relations... May all be right, all right. right. McGuire, take him into the interview room. Thanks. Are you putting up the money for this monkey? Yes, but who's raised the ante on this charge? So Ace knows less than we do. Now, what I want you to do is just... Oh, cop, no whispering. Now, well, listen, officer, haven't you got a heart? This man has just suffered a terrible loss. Oh, what? I can't help it. The rules are no whispering. It's about his grandmother. The old lady just died. Mm, that's tough. But the regulations... He was only 82, officer, and he loved her like a... like a grandson. Poor guy. Just let me speak to him alone for a few minutes. But the regulations... The are... last words were, Tony, tell Bugs yourself. Just break it to him gently. Okay, but only for two minutes. Pull yourself together. You know, 82's a good old age. 82. Who's 82? Your grandmother. She's just kicked the bucket. Now, listen, Ace hasn't got that doing. We haven't got it. It was hijacked by a fellow named Tavistock. Oh, if I ever get my hands on that That's guy. That's just what you're going to do. Let you spill his address. You're going over there. He's going to give you that dough or else. Well, who is he? Uh, anyone we know? Some English professor. The Schultz has met him on the Queen Anne. Queen Anne? That's the boat I came on. And maybe you seen this guy, Tavistock. I didn't see anything but trunks. Oh, I forgot that. Hey, uh, maybe Baldy knows him. Baldy? He's my pal. He's the guy I got pinched with. What? Oh, he's okay. We ducked the boat together. 
And supposing I bail him out, too? That's what I mean. Then he can put the finger on the guy. What does he look like? Well, Fletcher says he's about 5'8", gray hair, hatchet face, and about 60 years old. Turn on the waterworks. Huh? Cry, you dope. Here comes that cop. <laughs> Sorry, Larry, but time's up. <laughs> there, there, don't worry. You'll be out in time for the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Look after him. He's just had a great loss. <laughs> hey, what have you lost? I lost my grandmother. <laughs> well, yeah, where'd you lose her? I never had no grandmother. Well, how could you lose her? If you, hey, you must have had a grandmother. You must have had two. Otherwise, you'd have been born an orphan. Look, that was just a gag to get out. I'm going to have you bailed out, too. Oh, are you? Oh, oh, thanks very much. If there's anything I can do for you someday, just let me know, will you? Mm. Hey, there's something you can do for me right now. i got to put a guy on the spot. On what spot? I'm going to bump him off. Ah, a fellow that calls himself Professor Tavistock. He came over in the Queen Anne with us. An English fella. About your age. Uh, my age? Yeah, he had gray hair. Stand up. He's about five foot eight. How tall are you? Uh, oh, I'm only eight foot five. Uh, I mean, uh, five foot seven foot six and four. But, uh, well, I'm very short. Uh, why do you ask? Well, it was just about your build. Oh, no, no. Professor Tavistock doesn't look a bit like me. Oh, you've seen him then. Yeah. Well, uh, only from a distance. Oh, well, that's swell. Between the two of us, we'll get him just like that. Well, it won't be as easy as that, you know. You don't know where he lives, uh, do you? <laughs> yeah, he lives down at Mrs. Casey's apartment house. <laughs> and when I get him, I'll plug him full of holes. Oh, well, that, that might kill him. It will kill him. Well, uh, don't you think you could sort of just miss him and, and scale him a little bit? I never miss. I'll blow a tunnel right through him. Okay, Larry, you're up. There you are. Your pals brought you some clothes. Hey, what about him? One at a time. They're fixing him now. I'll see you outside, Baldy. Oh, I say, here. Here, come in. If, if somebody comes and bails me out, I'm not compelled to go, am I? When you're bailed out, you're out. Oh, well, couldn't I stay here if I paid? What do you think this is, a lodging house? Well, listen, when you people lock me up, I don't see why anybody else has got the right to come and interfere. Okay, you can send the other one up. Come on, out you go. Well, I don't like it. Come on, don't give me that. Come on, you don't like it. Come on, I don't want to stay here. I don't want to I warned you. I, I warned you. You don't realize what you're doing here. This might lead to something very, very serious. Here, here what's the idea? You've been bailed out. Yes, well, I protest very strongly against it. Why, what's wrong with it? Everything's wrong with it. I resent this interference. You give me my show back. I was quite comfortable there. Come on. But we're releasing you. Oh, but that's just it. I don't want to be released. And what's more, it's very unconstitutional. And if I tell your president what you're doing, you're going to get into trouble. Hey, what's wrong with this guy? Is he a screwball? No, I'm not. I'm no father. No, I'm an Englishman. And I demand to stay here. Well, we don't want you. Oh, you don't. Right. There. Now arrest me. Hey, kick this guy out of you. Look at the mess he's making. Hey, this is not the way to the cell. No, this is the way out. Yeah. <laughs> is that the English way of getting out of jail? No, it isn't. And I'm going back there. I'm going to stay there until they chop me out properly. Come on, we haven't got time to play. Huh. Well, listen, uh, I think I'll go for a walk uh, in the park. What for? Well, uh, I'd like to look at the statue. Come on, come on. We've got to go get Tavistock. Uh, well, you don't need me, do you? Well, sure, without you, I can never get him. Well, where, where are we going? We're going to Mrs. Casey's apartment house. Let's see, which way, which way it goes? Here, shall I go find a policeman and ask him? Oh, by all means. And don't forget to tell him that we're going to bump Tavistock off. <laughs> Call the policeman, the police. A couple of Chesterfields. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong shop. What's the matter, Baldy? Oh, oh there you are. I, I thought I'd lost you. Stick by me. Oh, I could do with some fruit. That'll cost you 25 cents. Yeah? Well, try and get it. Hey, what's the idea? You pay or I call a cop. <laughs> I'd love to see you call a cop. Hey, I guess you don't know who he is, do you? Why, do you? I don't care who he is. It's my quarter or... Go on and call a cop, you... Oh, that's all right, mister. I should worry about a few bananas. Eat hearty. Oh! Oh! What's oh. the matter? Oh, I slipped. I, I, I must have twisted my foot. Oh, 
Oh, that's oh. too bad. Oh, 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 Yeah. Well, uh, I don't think I'd better go in with you. You see, the landlady might... Uh, uh, she might not like two strangers going in. I'll stay here in case he comes out. Now, what good would that do? I don't know what he looks like. I'm liable to bump off the wrong guy. I mean, I wish you would. Well, I, I say, well, that wouldn't be so good, would it? Well, well, look, you stay here and I'll go in, you see. Why should you take all the risk? He's liable to bump you off. Well, well wait a minute. Let's telephone, see if he's out. Oh. Sister, where's Tavistock's room? Why, has he forgotten? Uh, oh, I'm his brother. Brother? But I thought you uh, were the yes, brother. Yes, I know what you thought. You thought his brother was a much older man, but uh, he's not, you see. I, I've got to see him immediately on very important business. Thank you very much. Number 76, right? Thank you. Hey! Say, that was clever of you to think about that brother business. Yeah, not number seven. Go on. Oh. Here, wait a minute. Wait. Uh, we'd better not go in without knocking. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll knock, and if there's no answer, we can go away, can't we? No, we'll go in and wait for him. But he may not be back for hours. We're in no hurry. Go ahead, knock. Knock. Go ahead. See much use waiting, does it? We'll wait just the same. Oh, well, uh, listen. Supposing I, uh, supposing Tavistock gave you the ransom money, would you still want to fill him full of plugs? There's just one way to treat a heel like that. Shut his mouth for good. Oh. Well, maybe if you explain the matter nicely to him, he uh, he might shut it himself. Uh, he'll get what's coming to him. Sit down and take it easy. Oh, oh, it's all right. It's only me, Baldy. You remember? What's the matter, Baldy? Where are you going? Uh, I, I, I thought I saw Tavistock coming down the street. Oh, that's swell. Yes, shall I go and see if it is him? That's a good idea. And if it's Tavistock, when he comes through the front door, whistle. Then when he gets up here in front of this door, whistle again, and I'll let him have it. Uh, uh, yes, well, if I don't whistle, don't think I've gone. Uh, I shall still be watching. Uh, you know what to do. Uh, yes, w when he comes in the front door, I whistle once, and then when I whistle again, he's here, and, and you let him have it. Yes? I told you, Mrs. Casey, but we think that somebody's staying here. We want. Here? There's no wanted person here. Jumbo. Jumbo. Hey, have you seen my dog? Uh, yes, you went that way. Jumbo. <coughs> what is this? Anyhow, what authority have you got? Just this. For heaven's sake, don't whistle. Why not? Well, it's, it's very unlucky. Oh, uh, you're crazy. <coughs>
Baldy, get over. Just what that reporter could do. Now put your hands in your pocket like you had a gun and do just the same as I do. Say, hey, Tony, it's a double cross, all right. Who do you think he's got with him? Professor Tavistock himself. Yeah. <coughs> Keep that schnozzle quiet. <laughs> this man Tavistock is bigger than we thought. Hello, Ace. Hey, Bugs, where the heck you been? Never mind, I'll do the talking. Hey, stop kidding. I ain't kidding. Keep your hands where I can see them. All right, Briggs, get over there. Maybe you wouldn't mind telling me what this is all about. Oh, I'd like to have a talk about Professor Tavistock. Who's there? You didn't think I'd come here alone, do you? That's my pal. Come on in, Baldy. Now remember, remember, do what, do what he told you. Keep your hands where I can't see him. Holy mackerel. Bugs, you son of a gun, you got it. Huh? I certainly am glad to see you. Have a cigar. Did you know that? Bugs, I gotta hand it to you. I didn't know you were so smart. Old Chicago looking for Professor Tavistock, and Bugs Leary brings him in. Nice work, kid. <laughs> Professor Tavistock, did you hear that, Baldy? He thinks you're the guy we're looking for. <laughs> Well, he's right. I am. If you don't believe me, look at that. Uh, that's me on the left, by the microphone. Look. Baldy, tell me something. Are you Professor Tavistock, yes or no? Yes. And when we was in jail together, you was Professor Tavistock? Of course. And when I was telling you all my plans, you were still Professor Tavistock? Certainly I was. And when we were sitting in the room waiting for him, you was the guy we was waiting for? Uh, yes. Let me out of that thing! So you didn't know it was Tavistock you brought in? Now then, Professor, what have you done with the ransom money? Well, it's rather a long story, you see. I came to Chicago to start a school. All right, skip that. Now come to the point. Uh, yes, but that is the point. You see, I went to the Schultzes to tutor their son, I mean, you go and spoil everything by kidnapping the only scholar I've got. How did you know I kidnapped him? Why, uh, Bugs told me, didn't you, Bugs? Yes, he did. <coughs> well, when I took the money along, of course, I went to the wrong place. And there was nobody there but Bugs. What's the Bugs? <sighs> you mean you had the money on you? Yes, in a brown paper parcel. And you didn't give it to Bugs? No, he never asked me for it. Do you hear that, Bugs? Bugs! <coughs> 
<laughs> Looks like he's past hearing anything. Never mind him. Where's that dough? Hadn't I better give him a cushion or something? Listen, you, stop stalling. Where's that dough? Well, I said you threatening me, because I know where the money is and you don't, see? And I'm not going to give it to you until you hand over Bertie Schultz. Okay, but don't you try to pull anything. Charlie, send the kid down. Uh, University 3946, please. What do you think he's doing? I'm only phoning Mrs. Schultz to tell her Bertie's here. Professor! Say, did this poke snatch you too? Oh, no, no. I've come to ransom you. Your father sent me. I'm the, uh, the get-between. Good night. Couldn't they have found a better man than you? No, they were all busy. Hey, here, here. What do you mean, a better man than I? Well, I like that. After all the trouble I've taken, after me risking my life... Cut it out. Was... We produce a boy, now you produce a doe. Well, as a matter of fact, I haven't got it on me now. I hid it. Where? Well, you know the statue of George Washington in the park? Yeah. Well, it's under his arm. Are you trying to be funny? No, if you don't believe me, go and look for yourself. Fred, Charlie, go to the park and phone me back. Okay, reach. This is quite a family party, huh? Risk them, boys. Hey, don't think I'm one of the family. I just stopped in to Shut tell... Shut up. Them... Ace, where are your manners? Now, you were saying, Professor... Well, I just stopped in to tell them where I put the ransom money, and these two fine fellows are going to get it. From where? The Washington statue. Thanks, Prop. Now, you and me are going to have a little talk, and in the meantime, two of my fine fellows will go along with yours. Washington statue, huh? Uh, in the park. The money's under his arm. Curly. Uh, well, Bertie and me will go with him in case they make a mistake. Oh, no, you're not. You're staying here in case you have made a mistake. Lock him up, Joe. I got a few words to say to Tony, and I don't want anybody to hear. Well, there's no need to lock me up. Besides, I've been locked up once a day. I promise you won't listen. I hope you don't find the money now. Oh, huh. well, here's a nice state of affairs. So the jolly will that if someone else got that money. Money? Say, you were on the level about that statue, were you? Of course I was. I put it there myself. Why, it's under, it's under Washington's right arm. Uh, no, wait a minute. No, he's left arm. No. It, it's under his right arm, yes. The other hand's on a Negro slave's head. A Negro slave? Well, what's Washington doing with a Negro slave? I mean, how do I know? I didn't make the statue. Washington has no slave on his statue. Oh, yes, he has. Don't be silly. He's standing there with his hand on a little nigger boy's head, and he's, uh, he's, uh, em em emancipating him. He's what? Freeing the slaves, telling them they can hop it. Well, when did he do that? Why, in, uh, how do I know? That's American history. You should know that. Well, I do know it. But Washington never freed any slaves. It was Abe Lincoln who did that. Abe who? Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Tell me, I've told him the wrong statue. I'd better go down and explain. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I wouldn't worry about that. They'll soon find out. Oh, I know. That's just what I am worrying about. Because if they find out that I've double-checked, uh, uh, double-crossed them, they're going to like to come back here and blow a tunnel through me. Here, let's barricade the door. Then, then they, they can't get in. Go on, push it over, John. That's right. That'll do. Now, 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 let's try to think of a way to get out of here. Yeah. Well, there must be some way. Oh, the skylight. Well, how are we going to get way up there? Here, yeah, I'll show you. Hey, you see this slope? Yeah. Well, oof, wait, you grab hold of that. Now, I'm going to hang on this hook, you see? And when you pull on this rope, it'll take me up to the skylight. But then how do I get up? Well, one thing at a time. You get me up there, then I'll think about getting you up, you see? Listen, Ace, I'm going to be big-hearted. Split 50-50. What do you say? You snatch the kid on his territory, legally speaking, the door is his. You don't want me to enforce the law, do you? Okay. I'll get it. Yeah? Yeah, Curly? What? Are you sure? The dough is not in the Washington statute. It's not? Where's the prop? Go, go, pull up. I can't reach it from here. I can't. You're too heavy. Well, can't you tie a weight or, 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 or tie a bell or, or jump off the chop or something? Hurry up. I'm getting dizzy. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Ah! Oh, oh. Did that do it? It jolly lily bashed me brains out. You'll never miss them. Hey, if I wasn't up here, I'd come down there and... Well, since you're up there, how about trying to get me up? All right. Hey, step on it and get me up there. Okay, boy, shoulders. Hurry! Well, shut your eyes and duck your head. Get up on the roof and cut him off. Here. You two take the stairs. 
Which way to the roof? This way. Oh, what is this, celebration? Professor and the kid have got away. Yeah. Professor and the kid have got away. Poor old Baldy got away. And they're all after him. Yeah. And I'm after him, too! And I'm after him, too! Come on, we climb down this drain pipe. Not me. What do you think I am, a steeplejack? Well, I guess he is. Jealous? The one that I'm not green after looking down there. Come away from there at once. Hey! Hey! You take the north side of the roof, we'll take the south. Charlie, stay on that door. Oh. Hey, up there, quick one. Where did they go to? Never mind, get up and find out. Well, then, you've got brains, Baldy. You've got too much brains. That's why I gotta blow them out. Crazy up here. Yeah. Well, hey, let's see where this leads to. Come on, hang on to my coat. Come on. Oh, that's funny. This is the third one of these we've passed. I wonder what they are. Maybe they're railings. Railings? Why, what do you think they're trying to keep out? Pigeons? Here's another one with a piece of paper on it. I know it. I put it there. Why, have you been up here before? No. Can't you see what we're doing? We're going around in circles. Oh, that's stupid. How can I walk around in circles? Oh! Well, look where we are! <laughs> you look. I've seen it. They're on top of the chimney. Look out, there's somebody coming. Have I heard of the wreck of the Hesperus? Look, here's a ladder. Let's go down in. Where? Da what, down the inside of the chimney? Now you might walk into a fire. Don't be silly. When there's no smoke, there can't be a fire. Come on. Well, I know that. I was just going to say the same thing to you. Can you see? 
Sidewalk? I ain't allowed to spit on the sidewalk. Oh, you want to be tough? You'll get seven days for this. Seven days? Yeah. For spitting? Yeah, for spitting. <laughs> on the sidewalk? Sure. I ought to get 14 days for that. I ought to get a month for that. <laughs> that ought to be good for six months. I blew his whistle once for six months. Fly it 60 times and call out the militia. Hold him, quick, he's crazy. And he says to me, why are they waiting for the Schultz ransom money? <laughs> and I tell him, I tell him, and he's got it. <laughs> what do you know about the Schultz ransom? What do I know about the Schultz ransom? I walked around with it for 48 hours. <laughs> well, where did you put it? I didn't put it. I didn't have it. I just walked around with it. I didn't have it. <laughs> where is this money? Abraham Lincoln's got it. He's cuckoo, all right. <laughs> you bet I'm cuckoo. You bet I'm cuckoo. 10,000 people walking around Lincoln Park. <laughs> they all can see the ransom money. Everybody can see the ransom money. Everybody but Bugs Leary. <laughs> Even Abraham Lincoln's laughing at me. Hey, hold it, Chief, in the Schultz's. Okay. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought upon this continent a nation for the people, by the people, with the people, under the people, over the people, to the people, by the people, good people, nice people, uh, hairy people, and bald headed people, and bald headed people, and bully, bully, bully. <laughs> Thank you. Come on. 